Hi, my name is Noah Pendleton. I'm a firmware engineer at Memfault. And in this video, I'm going to be doing a Memfault quick start integration on an ESP32 board. A couple of prerequisites before we jump into the quick start. So first off, I've got a ESP32 dev kit. It's a ESP32 S3 dev kit, but Memfault's integration works with all ESP32 variants out there. The other prerequisite I've set up already is I've downloaded and installed the ESP IDF SDK that lets me build and flash ESP IDF applications. So before we start the quick start, I'm going to create a small test application to do the quick start with. I'm going to be using the console advanced example that is provided by the ESP IDF SDK. I'm just going to copy that entire project into a new folder called ESP32 quick start demo. And I'm going to go into that folder and I'm going to initialize it as a Git repository and um, just save all those basic uh, template starting app files, um, just so we have a nice clean starting point for our integration. OK, now that that's all set up, let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is create a new project. I'm going to select the MCU category and express if ESP32 is the chip we're using. I'm going to call the project ESP32 Quick Start Demo. And then to run the Quick Start, I'm going to go over to the Setup Project tab on the left-hand side. So. This section has the steps we need to follow to run through the quick start and get some sample data uploaded to Memfault and validate that our board and our project can um, upload data to Memfault. OK, so the first step is create a project. Your integration starts here. It's already marked as complete, so we're all set. Let's just click on it. Uh, it says, your project has been successfully created. When you created your project, you were automatically taken to a page that included your project key. We've included the project key in all relevant code snippets in the rest of the guide. If you need it later, you can always find it in settings. OK, great. So the project key is what's used to upload data to Memfault, and that's already been included, so we don't need to do anything there. Next step is set up the SDK. For the quickest integration, we recommend having a console and Wi-Fi connectivity available in the application. And we've got that. Check out either ESP IDF's advanced console example, which is the one we're using, or the example in our SDK for how to add these two components. OK, so starting with clone the SDK. First, clone the Memfault SDK. We recommend cloning the SDK into a project workspace similar to this. So this is sort of a, another variant of an ESP IDF project workspace. It's got the ESP IDF SDK here, the project here, and then this folder third party um, where the Memfault firmware SDK would normally be installed. In our case, our project is a sort of a standalone project, so we don't have this exact directory hierarchy. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to, instead of cloning the Memfault firmware SDK into a folder like this, we're going to add it as a Git submodule to our new project. So I'm going to do git submodule add. And then that's the GitHub URL for the Memfault Firmware SDK. And I'm going to put in a folder called third party Memfault Firmware SDK. OK. And I'm just going to save that change. Add Memfault SDK. OK. Next step, add Memfault to your project. Next, we'll edit our project cmakelist.txt to add memfault as a component and set up a post build command to add a memfault build ID to our application. CMake needs the location of the memfault SDK as an absolute path. If you follow the previous step, use the snippet. Otherwise, adapt for your SDK location. OK, so this should be pretty close to what we did. So I'm just going to open up the project in VS Code and opening up the cmakelist.txt file, I'm going to add the snippet right before the project function. Um, which is what these instructions specify. I'm also going to edit this path here to make sure it's correct for where we um, installed the memfault from RSDK in this location here via that git submodule. Okay, now we're all set there. Next step, we will add a post build step to inject the memfault build ID into our symbol file. Use this snippet here. Okay, I'll just copy that snippet there. And it says add these lines after the project command. Okay. Add those lines after the project command. All set. Next step, configure Memfault. With the Memfault SDK added to your project, the next step is to add a few config entries to your app's SDK config.defaults, or equivalent name for your setup. Okay. So I'll just copy that snippet, SDK config.defaults, and we'll just add it to the end. And there's that project key that was mentioned at the start. So that's already been added to that snippet. There's no need to change that. Next step is add a core dump partition. Finally, we will allocate a partition to save any core dumps collected by Memfault. Add the following to your application's partitions.csv or equivalent partition table file. OK, copy that snippet. In this example app, it looks like it's in partitions example.csv. We'll add it there. 
Also going to bump the size of the factory app slot a little bit. We uh, want to make sure we have enough room for this app um, after it recompiles. It's got a lot of features already enabled, so just to make sure we have the space. All right, update your app. With Memfold added and configured with ESP IDF, next, add Memfold to your code. OK, it looks like we're going to add some changes to app main. So let's go into our main file, add the includes, and then app main function. This is the entrance point of our application in ESP IDF. We are going to add these two function calls memfall boot and memfall device info dump. And then just add a comment here. Save that. OK, next step, verify your application in memfall. Before building, we'll reset our build state and set the target. The target should be one of ESP32, et cetera. Um, our chip is the ESP32S3. So let's run this command, idf.py set target ESP32S3. OK, while that's running, I'm going to connect my board to my computer so I can flash it. OK, great. So that succeeded. Let's go ahead and run idf.py build to build the program. OK, that completed successfully. That's great. Uh, next step is to flash your device and connect the console using idf.py flash monitor. Um, before we do that, I'm going to save our work since we were able to successfully build. So I'm just going to do git add cmake list, console example main, partitions, and sdkconfig.defaults. OK, git commit dash m builds. OK, and then we're going to run the idf.py flash and monitor commands. So this should flash the board and then open the serial terminal. That's what the monitor command does for idf.py. Okay, now it's flashing the board. Okay, great. Um, looks like it flashed and started the serial terminal. We should see the application print memfault device info at boot. Here's an example. Memfault build ID, serial number, software type, software version. Okay. Um, yep, we can see that there. So there's the build ID, serial number, software type, software version, and hardware version matching our board. Great. Memfault provides some default console commands. Check their availability with help. Okay. Help. Okay, got quite a few commands here. See assert, crash, ESP crash, leak, assert, crash, ESP crash, leak. Great. That matches the example there. Okay. So I think we're all set with set up the SDK. Next step is hello, Memfall. Upload your first data to Memfall. With Memfall as part of our application, we can use the built in console commands to test and collect data. Memfall enables tracking reboot events for your device right away. Okay. So once your device is connected, use the post chunks command to send the collected reboot event to Memfall. All right, I'm going to join a Wi-Fi access point I set up. There we go. We're connected. And then I'm going to post chunks. OK, result zero. It succeeded. Let's go over to the processing log in Memfault and take a look and see if any data came through. Hmm. Nothing yet. OK, there we go. There's the reboot event we just sent. 
Great. Looks like that has worked. Okay, I think we're all set with that. Um, looks like we have some options for our next step. So investigate a crash, examine a device, or monitor the fleet. Um, let's start with investigate a crash. Core dump collection is enabled out of the box. Before collecting a core dump, upload your symbol file, common mail file, to memfault. If you follow the recommend setup, this will file will be in a similar directory as shown here. Okay, looks like it's under the build folder project name.elf. Okay, so I'll click the upload symbol file button and we will open up the build folder in my file explorer, um, find console.elf, because the name of our application is console, and just drop that file here. Click add to upload it. Great, all set. Next step, it's time to trigger a crash. In your console, run this command, assert. Okay. Let's run the assert command. Okay, looks like the board restarted. Once the device reboots and connects to Wi-Fi, upload the data with post chunks. Okay. So do the same thing again, join our access point. Let's try that again. Oh, it looks like that succeeded. Okay, now let's post chunks. Okay, result zero. Navigate to the processing log and confirm that a core dump was received. It could take up to five minutes for the core dump to appear. Okay. Oh, there we go. Received core dump. Great. In the sidebar, navigate to the issues page and see the core dump once it processes. Okay. Issues page. There's the core dump. Cert. Click on its title to go through the trace view and see the details of the core dump. Okay. Click on the title. Trace view. Awesome. So we've got a crash, backtrace, number of active threads, got some logs. Awesome. Everything looks good here. I'm going to check that as done. All right, our next option. So I'm going to go with monitor the fleet. Heartbeat metrics are automatically collected by the memfold SDK on an hourly interval. See the current state of the device's heartbeat metrics with the heartbeat dump command. A lot of nulls, it looks like. Uh, a couple of times. Okay, looks just like the example. A lot of nulls and some timestamps and stuff like that. Run heartbeat and post chunks to trigger and upload the heartbeat. Okay. Heartbeat to trigger the heartbeat. Post chunks. Okay, result zero means it succeeded. Navigate to the processing log and confirm the heartbeat appears. This can take up to five minutes. Open the processing log in a separate tab. Hmm. Let's refresh that a few times. Okay, here we go. Received metric report heartbeat. Inspect payload. Awesome. Yeah, we can see lots of nice data here. Click on the device and click on the sample in the timeline to confirm the heartbeat data was decoded. Okay, so click on the device and click on the heartbeat sample in the timeline. Nice. Yep. So we've got things like heat free bytes, T, TCP, TX, and RX, UDP, TX, and RX, probably from DHCP. Connectivity expected time, connectivity connected time, CPU temp. Awesome. I'm going to mark that as done. And the last one is examine a device. Examine a device. Make sure all the data you've uploaded so far is appearing in your device's details page. Navigate to the fleet devices page and select the device reporting in to view its device timeline. Okay, so we'll go back to devices page, click our device, and there's the timeline. Click on the sample in the timeline to inspect the uploaded heartbeat record. It should look something like this. Okay, yep, just like we saw before. So we've got our data there. Click on the traces tab to see the trace you uploaded earlier. Okay, traces tab. Yep, there's the trace we uploaded earlier. Click on the reboots tab to see the reboot we uploaded earlier. 
Uh, reboots tab. Nice. So we got power on reset, and the assert was from that crash regenerated. Great. That all looks really good. Mark is done, and we are done. We finished our Memfall ESP32 quick start. Thanks for watching.